So in line with the theme of this talk, um, I'll be talking about what the flight of dreams means to me. And in order to do that properly, allow me to contextualize and you know, introduce you to why it is I might believe the things that I do believe. Because this will link up with my main point in my discussion. So I'm a student of international relations, which means that I've been exposed to a variety of different ideologies and ways of thinking and interpreting the world. Right? And one political ideology that I found particularly interesting is that of constructivism. Because constructivism puts a very, very important factor at the center of the stage. And what is that factor? Something that TED promotes in itself the power of an idea, right? And how an idea is able to affect everything, whether you're in the field of sciences, politics, engineering, legal studies. At the core of every single concept, ideas are always found. So let's contextualize it by acknowledging the power of an idea. Now we need to ask ourselves, what is the flight of dreams? So in my opinion, the flight of dreams can be interpreted in a couple of ways, and we'll begin with the first. The first is the flight of an individual's dreams. In my opinion, an individual is not bound to a single dream at one point, you know, at one point of their life, so throughout their entire life. There are a variety of dreams that you come across in your life, and those dreams are subject to change depending on your environment, um, the things you learn, the people you meet so on and so forth. So, coming to the topic of the individual, it's important to acknowledge the power of the idea and how it shapes that individual throughout the course of their life. So, allow me to use this metaphor to help you guys understand this a little better. So, let's say that your individual life, and therefore your dreams, are kind of like going to an airport, right? And therefore, the flight of dreams. So you begin at the ticket counter, you're deciding where you want to go, you know, what sights you want to see, what kind of experiences you want to have, and dreams are a lot like that, you know? We live in such a blessed world today to see that experiences and opportunities are so widely accessible because of transportation, social media, internet. And this is very true to how it was in the past, you know, it began with riding on horseback, you know, writing, and it continue to through with the telegram, printing press, and nowadays the biggest medium of communication is social media and the internet. So again, back to the analogy. We're deciding what kind of dream we want to allow to shape ourselves, right? And there's a multitude of different destinations or therefore dreams that you can choose from. And as an individual, this might seem quite confusing, I think that a lot of you can empathize with this. It's quite confusing because since there are a variety of dreams, it's hard to decide which one is right for you. And I'm sure that this is something that everyone can relate to. So in my experience, for example, as a student, um, when I was starting my college education in A-levels, I began as a science student. I wanted to go into psychiatry because I loved analyzing the mind and how psychology plays in shaping the world as we see it today. But unfortunately, um, I wasn't able to pursue psychiatry because, you know, I'm quite mathematically handicapped, and I think that's something that a lot of people can relate with. Um, so, you know, my dream of pursuing psychiatry came to a quick end, but in m a month into my A-levels, I made the decisive decision to switch to the art stream because I knew that I've always been interested in literature, language, and, and arts such as that. And that actually exposed me to an opportunity that shaped my life incredibly um, to this day, which is Model United Nations. And it opened me up to a variety of different ideas, a variety of different topics that were discussed at the global stage. And those ideas, those topics, those opportunities eventually shaped the decision that I took to study internationals at my international relations at my university. And here we can just see, you know, how there's a mini butterfly effect at the individual level that allows you to develop 
There are shortcomings, there are failures, there are changes, but you embrace them and it affects the individual that you are. So back in the airport, you've decided, okay, this is where I want to go. You know, you grab your bags, everything you learned so far, you go to the boarding hall, and you wait. And you see all of these different airplanes taking off, going God knows where. All around the world, seeing all kinds of different places. And for a lot of people, that actually makes you quite anxious to ask yourself, where are these planes headed? Where are these dreams taking these people? You know, is that dream going to be better than mine? Is that dream going to actually uh, occur better for this person than it would occur for me? And that is unsettling, because if there's one thing that humans fear, it is uncertainty, right? So while you're this individual in the boarding hall, it's important to take a step back to realize that you, know, you are not alone as an individual. I think that on the contrary to what is popularly being believed today, the individual is not the most important thing. Because when you analyze the individual, you tend to neglect the collective, the society, right? And that's why when we put so much emphasis on how the individual is important today, we're unable to see the effects that a compilation of individuals or a society has an effect that's good or bad on the environment. So my point so far is that it's easy to lose your sense of self, you know, being compared to all of the different dreams and individuals in this boarding hall with you and the daunting nature of watching all of these other flights take off before you've even bought it. So, what is important here? What is important, apart from the idea, is that you actually ask yourself, you know, <coughs> whose dream is it anyway? Are the dreams and beliefs that I hold actually mine? You know, because the reality of it is that your dreams could indirectly be the result of your upbringing, you know, the things that you've learned so far, your peers or family members believing that a particular job or profession is good for you. And for years, I believed that I would be a good psychiatrist, but, you know, that didn't turn out the way that it was supposed to. So my point here is that when you've come to this point where you actually question yourself, you know, is this really what it is that I want to be doing with my life? That is actually the most crucial point when it comes to dreaming. That point where you come to this cliff and you're looking down the pit and you ask yourself, is this dream really for me? Am I, able, am I gonna be able to achieve this dream? Because there is a very beautiful thing that comes from doubt and uncertainty. What is that thing, you may ask? It is the ability that, and if, that every one of you in this room actually has and that gift is the gift to introspect so to introspect means to soul search to look within yourself to ask yourself why it is that i hold these beliefs why is it that i'm dreaming this dream that i'm dreaming right and once you are able to question yourself about why it is you are holding these beliefs you'll be able to understand whether your dream is really meant for you at the end of the day because, for example, um, I've managed to do a pretty good job at keeping things simple for myself. You know, for, ironically, for someone who spends a lot of his time thinking and stressing out about my next step, my next move, my ultimate goal, and therefore my ultimate dream, has been to help people, right? So if there's one piece of advice that I can give you when you're introspecting, is try to keep it as simple as possible for yourself, because the simpler you get it, and the simpler you make it, the easier it is to general, generalize it according to how your life plays out. Because you know, as much as you want to be meticulous about planning, you don't have full control over your life. You don't have full control over what it is that you absorb because we are both conscious and subconscious individuals. And that's how we process information and that's therefore how we process ideas. So overall, the important thing that we've identified so far is the importance of introspection. So let's go back to our airport scenario again. We're at the ticket counter once again, 
And we realize that we're not actually alone in this at all, right? The people next to us, people across from us, there's a ticket lady or man across from us. You have the opportunity to talk with them, to mingle with them, to ask where they're from, why is it that they're doing what they're doing. And the beauty of it is that by communicating with other people, by teaching and by listening, it actually benefits the individual because you're learning from other people's experiences, right? And once upon a time, you were only able to rely on the experiences of those individuals that are directly with you. But as you know now, that is not the case. We live in an increasingly globalized world. It's easier to communicate through social media, through the internet. It's easier to keep in touch with your relatives, to meet new people, to access opportunities and jobs. It's just to click away these days. So, moving on from that ticket counter, once again, once we're in the baggage uh, area, and once we're checking in and we're going to the departure hall once again, rather than feeling that anxiety that you once felt, you know, maybe what you'd want to do is turn to the person next to you and strike up a conversation with them. Try to understand who they are, why it is that they're there, where are they headed, why are they headed there. Because once you open yourself up to how other people introspect themselves, you'll be able to introspect yourself better. Because the ultimate point of this discussion, and therefore how it is that you should dream, is that you need to be sincere first and foremost with yourself. Because if you are sincere with yourself in your decision making, in how it is that you think, with your ideas, your dreams, what it is you want to achieve. Whether you want to achieve world peace one day, whether it is you want to own a mansion one day with a Ferrari or a Bugatti Veyron, whatever it is. As long as your intentions are pure, as long as your intentions and needs are sincere and true to what it is that you would like to achieve, and it's for a good cause, ultimately, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. And that is why when I am trying to tell you about how it is that you should dream, try not to put the individual first. Try to put the collective first, the society. Ask yourself, again, whose dream is it really? Is my dream one that is only attuned to myself? The answer that I can tell you right now from my personal experiences so far is no. The reason why you are holding a particular dream, whether it be world peace, for example, is not only because you are the only one who wants to achieve world peace. The reality is that there are plenty of people out there who want to achieve world peace, right? But the means in which we achieve world peace, for example, are incredibly different. You talk to a lawyer, they'll say, you know, the legal system is incredibly important and we're bound to our laws and it helps society function and therefore it contributes to world peace. You talk to an engineer, they say, oh, you know, we need safe buildings that are sustainable, good for the environment, contributes to world peace. You talk to a psychologist, we need to understand how our mind thinks, how we process information, how we grow, how we develop. Better understanding of people contributes to a better understanding of ourselves, therefore contributes to world peace. So again, finally, just to conclude what it is I've been talking to you guys about so far, I want you to ask yourself, whose dream is it really? Is the dream that you're currently holding really meant for you? And if you still believe that it is, ask yourself why? Because your dream could create a butterfly effect and it could contribute to another person's dream. And with that, I think. Thank you.